Hello and welcome to the chapter on list manipulation. This is the part 6 of this particular chapter and in this part I am going to discuss about the concept of linear search. So let's get started with the concept of linear search. See there are different methods of searching an element from a given list of items. One of the methods for finding the list of elements or a particular element is linear search. So what is linear search? It is a search technique that involves examining each element of a list in a sequential manner. So let's say we have a list of items and from that list we need to search a specific element. In order to search for a specific uh, element, one of the search techniques that we are going to discuss now is the linear search. In this technique, the search starts from the first element of the list until the element is found. So how do we go about this particular search? In this search technique, the searching will start from the very first element of the list until the element to be searched is found. Let's try to understand it with the help of an example. Let us consider a list x with the elements as 45, 3, 65 and 77. Now if I implement linear search on this particular list, then how it will be? Let's say the item to be searched is 65. So among these items, we need to search whether the item 65 is present in this particular list X or not. So for doing this, at first, the first element will be taken up. What is the first element here? The first element is 45 and 45 will be compared with the item to be searched that is 65. So is 45 equals to 65? No, 45 is not equals to 65. So in that case, what it will do? It will move to the next element. So the next element now is 3. Now 3 will be compared with 65. Why? Because 65 is the element to be searched. So is 3 equals to 65? No, 3 is not equal to 65. So what will be done in this case? In this case, it will move to the next item of the list. What is the next item of the list? It is 65. So is 65 equals to 65? Yes, 65 is equals to 65. So at this position, once we search and find out that particular element, we need not search for the remaining elements. Because why do we need not search for the remaining elements? Because the element to be searched, we have already got the element that is to be searched. Since we have already got the element that is to be searched, we will no longer search the remaining elements. And what we can declare? We can declare that element is found at index to location 3. See, indexing starts from 0. So 45 has the index 0, 3 has the index 1 and 65 has the index 2. And we have found the element at which index? We have found the element at index number 2. And location starts from first. Location is the natural counting sequence. First, second, third. So the element is found at the location 3 and at the index 2. Now let us apply this search technique using Python programming language. So now I'm going to show you the actual Python implementation of this particular uh, search technique. So let's begin with the programming. So first is it is linear search in Python using list. So let's take a variable L and in that variable we will receive the list of numbers. Now how do I receive the list of numbers? For receiving the list of numbers we use a particular function called eval input. We have already discussed in my previous videos. If you are not very clear with this particular topic, you can go through those videos first before uh, going to the implementation of linear list. So eval input is used in order to receive a list from the user. So we'll give some instructions here like enter a list of numbers to perform linear search. All right. After that, we will receive the item to be searched. So let's take it as integer only int input. How do I receive an integer by the function int input? So int input enter the item to be searched. 
all right now what we'll do we'll have to find out the length of the list how do i find out the length of the list by using the ln function so it will be ln of l so it will count the number of elements present in the list that is required in order to traverse the list now i'll be using a loop don't worry i'll trace each and every line uh, line by line and then you will understand it better so for i in range we need to traverse the entire list till the length of the elements so we'll start from zero and go to till length after that whatever element will be received we will compare each element with the item to be searched so how do i compare where is the list located list is located in the variable l and this i will take the values from 0 to length minus 1 so and in each iteration one of the index starting from the first index will be there so how do i need to check so if li equals to equals to item then we'll get the element we can simply write as item found at index comma i slash and let's say location location will be one more than the index so it will be i plus one and once we get an item do i need to check the remaining items no it's not required so what i'll do here i'll simply put a break statement here after doing this what i'll do i'll use the loop else remember loop else will be executed if the loop uh, terminates normally not because of a break statement so here we can write item not present in the list okay we are done with the program i'll explain it again by tracing don't worry if you have not understood it properly uh, let's start py let's see if this particular program and i'll be running the program now okay so enter a list of numbers to perform linear search let's take the numbers as 11 22 33 44 55 let's say i need to search for 33 enter the item to be searched let's say 33 and see it is showing that item found at index 2 0 1 2 and location is for second third so location 3 so i'm getting the correct output now let's run the program again again enter a list of numbers i'll give the same set of numbers 11 22 33 44 and 55 enter the item to be searched let's say i'll give the item to be searched as 99 this time the item is not present so it will be displaying that item is not present in the list now what i'm going to do i'm going to explain each and every line of this code line by line so let's get started with the process of explanation so let's assume that this is the output screen all right so what does the first line says first line says to enter a list of numbers to perform linear search so if this is the output screen what will come here enter a list of numbers to perform linear search let's say i enter the list of numbers as 11 22 33 and 44 now whatever i'll be entering it will be stored in which variable it will be stored in the variable l so what will be l now l will be 11 22 33 and 44 what are the indexes of this i'm talking about the forward indexes 0 1 2 and 3 after that first line is complete let's go to the second line second line says enter the item to be searched this is the output screen so what will come here and the item to be searched let's say i want to search for 33 so what will be stored in the variable item in the variable item i'll be having 33 let's go to the next line length equals to len of l so length equals to len what does len do len will count the number of elements in the list and store it in the variable length now how many elements are there in the list there are four elements in the list so length will be how much length will be 
4. Let's go to the next line which is a loop for i in range 0 comma length. So as you can see here for i in range 0 comma length. What is the value of length? 4. So what are the possible values of this range? The possible values will be 0, 1, 2 and 3 as we have already learned in the chapter flow of control. Now what will be the first value of i? The first value of i will be 0. So it will take 0 and it will come inside the loop. That means it will get the entry here. After that, what is there? If li equals to equals to item. So li, li means what? Li means l. What is the current value of i? The current value of i is 0. So l 0. L 0 means value present at the index 0. What is the value present at the index 0? It is 11. So what is there in the code? If li equals to equals to item. So what is the item? The item is 33. So is 11 equals to 33? No, it is not equals to 33. So what will happen here? It will not get a chance to get into this particular if block. So as a result, what will happen? The loop will again reiterate. This time the value of i will be how much? The value of i will be 1. So it will take up 1 and it will come inside this loop. Again this line if li equals to equals to item, li means this time l1, l1 means value present at the index 1. What is the value present at the index 1? The value present at the index 1 is as you all can see it is 22. So 22, what is written here if li equals to equals to item. So is 22 equals to item, what is the item? 33 is 22 equals to 33? No, it is false. So again, it will not get a chance to go inside this particular if block. So what will happen? Again, the loop will iterate. This time with the value of i as 2, it will, the value of i is 2 now, it will take 2 and it will go to this particular line, which is if li equals to equals to item. What is li? li means l2. l2 means value present at the index 2. What is the value present at the index 2? It is 33. Equals to equals to item. What is the value of item? The value of item is 33. Is 33 equals to 33? Yes, 33 is equals to 33. So this will become true now. Since it will become true, these two lines will get executed. So what is written there? Item found at index. Item found at index. So what will come here? Item found at index i. What is the value of i? The value of i is 2. Slash n means it will cursor will come to the next line. Location i plus 1. What is the value of i? Value of i is 2. 2 plus 1 is how much? 3. So item found at index 2 location 3. After that what we have? We have this break statement. So when we have this break statement the current loop will forcefully be terminated. See we have one item remaining to be checked but should I check it? No I should not check it because I have already got the item that I intended to search. So what will happen? The loop will forcefully terminate. And loop else will it run? No, it will not run. Loop else as we have already discussed in the chapter on flow of control, it will only run if the loop terminates normally and not because of a break statement. But this time the loop is terminated because of a break statement. So loop else will not run. So what will be shown at the output? Item found at index 2, location 3. So this is the manner in which this program is being executed. Now let's consider another situation. Let's say it is the same list and the item to be searched is not 33. Let's assume it to be 99. So if that is the case, what will happen? 
here it will compare the same process 11 with 99 false 22 with 99 false 33 with 99 false after that again it will the next value of i will be 3 that is how much 44 if l i equals to equals to item l i means l3 let's say l3 is how much 44 equals to 99 is it true no this time also it is false that means i have traversed the entire loop now there is no more chance of traversal because i have uh, used up all the values but still i have not got the item that means this particular line this particular if statement will never become true that means the loop will be terminated but has it got a chance to encounter this break statement no it has never got a chance to encounter the break statement so what it will do this time loop else will be executed so again i am explaining loop else will only be uh, executed if the loop terminates normally not because of a break statement now if the element to be searched is 99 the loop will not terminate because of a break statement it will terminate normally so what will be shown in the items uh, this one output screen this time in the output screen it will show that item is not present in the list i hope that this particular uh, code is clear this is how we have traced the program all right now let's move ahead so this is the program that we did and this is the output we have taken uh, some list of numbers item to be searched is 44 and here 0 1 2 3 it is showing that item is found at index 3 so location will be 4 if i again take some set of inputs and the item to be searched is 77 now it will traverse the entire list one after another but even then it will not find the item so if what it will display it will display that the item is not present in the list all right now it's not that linear search is a perfect search technique there are some drawbacks of linear search let's see what these drawbacks are the first drawback is that linear search is not an efficient method for large list see if the list is very lar large we need to check each and every item sequentially without skipping any item in between so for large list it will take up a lot of time so it is not a very efficient method for large list next drawback is time required is more if the element to be searched is one of the elements from the end for example let's say this is a list and we need to search for 77 in that case what should be done 77 will at first be compared with 45 then with 3 then with 65 and then finally will reach to 77 so it is having how many comparisons one two three and four so it will take up a lot of time if the element to be searched is one of the elements from the end so these are the drawbacks of linear search so for rectifying these drawbacks and another and many other search techniques are there like binary search which we will discuss in class 12 only i hope that this session was useful thank you very much